This is the CBS Radio Workshop, the theater of the mind, dedicated to man's imagination. Today we take pride in presenting E.M. Forster's The Celestial Omnibus, adapted especially for the workshop by Richard Shattuck. This is a story for skeptics, and the story of Jamie, who was not a skeptic. Jamie, a small boy who found himself wondrously alive in the days of Victorian England. Hello there. And Cynthia. Good afternoon, Mrs. Summers. How good to see you both again. We're so pleased that you could accept our invitation. Uh, do go oh, in. Oh, thank you. Uh, Bert, Mr. Barnes and his daughter are here. Uh, Jamie, Jamie. Okay, Mother. Do we have visitors? I saw the carriage drive away just as they came past the signpost. Jamie, what were you doing down at that end of the road? Your father and I have told you never to go beyond number 36. I was down by the alley, Mother. That signpost points up the alley. But there's nothing there. The sign says, to heaven. But it only points up a blind alley. What does it mean, Mother? Many years back, some naughty young men put it there as a joke. The sign ought to be removed by the authorities. Such nonsense. What kind of young men were they? I, I believe your father told me that one of them wrote verses and was expelled from the university and came to grief in some way or another. Then, then it doesn't mean anything at all. <laughs> no, son, it doesn't. Now, quickly, go in, tidy up. Little Cynthia Bonds is here. And Daddy is president of the Literary Society this year. I say, Seth, but you've coached her well. She must be your most ardent publicist. Well, you know how children will talk. Uh, of course, though, I am a bit hopeful for my chances in the coming election. A seat on the county council would be most helpful. Mr. Barnes, sir, hmm? where is heaven? Why, <coughs> you might say... Uh... Jamie, the boy is talking about that signpost down the road, Mr. Barnes. Oh, yes, that bit of a joke young Shelley put up. It still stands there, you say. I told you so, my dear. It's nothing but a joke. And uh, Shelley was the name of that young man. Have you ever heard of Shelley, Jamie? No, sir. Well, no book of Shelley's in the house? Why, yes, of course. Dear Mr. Barnes, we aren't such Philistines as that. We have two, at least. Well, I, I believe we have seven Shelleys. A very brilliant writer, you know. Uh, 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 Jamie, uh, why don't you and Cynthia go outside and play until dinner time? All right. Come along, Cynthia. <laughs> That's the commuter's express, isn't it, Jamie? It always passes our house just before sunset. You can see it down there in the valley. Oh, yes, I see it. It looks just like a snake, doesn't it? Don't you love this time of the day? It's so wonderful, I almost want to cry. How silly and childish. Here's that signpost you were talking about at tea. To heaven. And it's pointing up that blind alley. Have you ever been up the alley, Jamie? Not all the way. My parents say that it's not a nice neighborhood. Jamie, let's you and I go together and see what is really there. Come on. Here we are. But there's nothing here at all. Nothing but that high brick wall at the end of the alley. I like to kick that, Shelley. Hello, what's this over here, Jamie? It's some paper pasted on the wall. Jamie, listen to what it says. S and CRCC announces alteration in service. Owing to a lack of patronage, the company is regretfully compelled to suspend the hourly service and to retain only the sunrise and sunset omnibuses, which will run as usual. It is to be hoped that the public will patronize an arrangement which is intended for their convenience. As an extra inducement, the company will, for the first time, now issue return tickets. Good for one day only, which may be obtained from the driver. Passengers are again reminded that no tickets are issued at the other end and that no complaints in this connection will receive consideration from the company. 
nor will the company be responsible for any negligence or stupidity on the part of the passengers, nor for hailstorms, lightning, loss of tickets, or any other act of God. Signed, the directors. Does, does it say where the omnibus goes, Cynthia? No, it doesn't. What do the letters S and CRCC stand for? The S must stand for Surbiton. The RCC probably means road car company. But I can't guess what the other C stands for. Maybe city? How strange. Why don't they sell tickets at the other end? And what a strange hour to start. At sunrise and sunset. Cynthia, come here. Aren't those wheel marks on the ground? There. Oh, Jamie, let's go home, quick. Oh, my. Nine o'clock already. You children had better be getting to bed oh, now. Oh, yes, Cynthia, it's time you were asleep. You two must be tired after your long walk to heaven. <laughs> oh, <laughs> please, Bert. You've teased them enough already. Good night, Mr. and Mrs. Summers. Good night. Good night, Daddy. Good night, my dear. Good night, my dear. about the omnibus. I, I happen to find out if it's real and where it goes. If I hurry, I may be able to reach the alley before sunrise. There is nothing here at the end of the alley. The sign is a lie. But, but why should they put up a sign that doesn't tell the truth? in the wall tells about? Omnibus est. About when do you leave? In another minute, lad. How far do you go? All the way. And can I have a return ticket which will bring me back? You can. You know, I think I'll go with you. Jump in quickly then, my boy, for we're on our way. How can we get out this way? We're heading straight for that wall at the end of the alley. The wall. It's opening up. I've forgotten my money. Stop! Stop! Mr. Driver, stop! Oh, do please stop. We are unable to stop now. What is it, my boy? Oh, Mr. Driver, I've left my purse behind. I won't be able to pay for my tickets. Tickets on this line, whether single or return, can be purchased with money from no earthly mint. And a chronometer, though it had measured the slumber of Laura or solaced the vigils of Charlemagne, is of no value. Here is your ticket. Thank you, Mr. Driver. <clears throat> Titular pretensions are, I know, but vanity. Yet they do serve to distinguish one Jack from his fellow. Remember me, therefore, as Sir Thomas Brown. Are you a sir? Oh, I am sorry. It is good of you about the ticket, Sir Thomas. But if you go on at this rate, however does your bus pay? It does not pay. That error, at all events, was never intended and never attained. Sorry again, sir. Oh, uh, come on up and sit beside me on the box here, boy. Hmm? Have you been a driver always? Mm, I was a physician once. But why did you stop? For any good? Oh, uh, as a healer of bodies, I had scant success, and uh, several of my patients preceded me. But as a healer of the spirit, I have succeeded beyond my hopes. Tell me, Sir Thomas, have you ever heard of a man named Shelley? Oh, my, yes. He is a driver like myself. Where are we going, Sir Thomas? Oh, you will soon see. Are you afraid, lad? No, Sir Thomas. Well, here we are. Look, Sir Thomas. Look at the rainbow that is forming under our omnibus. It's moving across the sky. Will it stop? It's like a rainbow you can walk on. What is that out there? 
What is the rainbow resting on at the other end? Is it a castle or a mountain? Oh, look, between those cliffs, on the ledges, I see people. I see trees. Look also below. Neglect not the treacherous Hades. That, that music coming from the pool of water down there. What is it, Sir Thomas? On the water's glistening surface, you see truth reflected. Truth has its depths as well as its heights. Oh, but you, my boy, need not be concerned with the siren song. Your path lies ahead. Come, let us start across. Sir Thomas, the horses are pulling the omnibus across the rainbow. Wonderful, wonderful, beautiful. <laughs> Truant and a liar. There is no omnibus, no driver, no rainbow bridge. Jamie, please, please tell your father you're sorry. I, I cannot. Mother, it was the greatest experience of my life. Today, I went to heaven. You will go up to your room without dinner, James, and memorize that poem you were working on for school. Go to your room now. Yes, Father. Oh, Bert... Can't we believe? What will Mr. Bonds and his daughter think? I don't care what they think. The boy needs to be taught that he must control his imagination. Jamie, dear, you can come down now and bring your poetry with you. I haven't learned, Father. Hello, Mr. Barnes. Hello, Jamie. And Cynthia. Well, well, here's our great traveler. Here is the young man who rides in an omnibus across a rainbow. After all, <laughs> there is something similar to Jamie's experience in Wagner. That's odd how, in spite I mean, quite illiterate minds, you will often find glimpses of artistic truth. Uh, uh, let me plead for the culprit. Hear how kind Mr. Barnes is, Jamie. Very well. Let him say his poem, and that will do. He's going away to my sister's on Tuesday, and she will cure him of these fantasies. Now, say your poem, boy. Standing aloof in giant ignorance. <laughs> oh, one for you, my son. Standing aloof in giant ignorance. I never knew these poets taught sense exactly describes you. Except you go in for poetry. Take him through well, it. <clears throat> come over here, my boy, and we'll see how well you learn. Fine. Uh, but you fix the drinks. Cindy and I will make some refreshments. Yes, Mrs. Summers. Uh, uh, now, Jamie... Let me hear you say your Keats. Standing aloof in giant ignorance of thee I dream and of the Cyclades as one who sits ashore and longs perchance to visit. That's quite correct, quite correct. Well, continue, my boy. To visit what? To visit dolphin coral and deep seas. Well, <laughs> why are you crying? Because, because all these words that that only rhymed before. Now that I've come back, they, they're me. You? The sonnet you? Yes. And read farther on. I, on the shore of darkness, there is light, and precipices show untrodden green. It is so, sir. All these things are true. Oh, I never doubted their veracity. You... You believe me. You believe in the omnibus and the driver... And the storm, and that return ticket I received without having to beg... No, 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 no more of your yarns, lad. I, I meant that I never doubted the essential truth in poetry. Someday, when you've read more, you will understand what I mean. But, Mr. Barnes, it is so. There is light upon the shore of darkness. I have seen it. Light and a wind. Oh, nonsense. If, if I had only stayed up there. They tempted me. They told me to give up my ticket... But I thought of my mother and father, and that I must fetch them, too. The people up there warned me that no one would believe me. I shall never see that mountain again. But I told them about you, Mr. Barnes, and how clever you were, and how many books you had. Huh? But they said Mr. Barnes will certainly disbelieve you. Well, stuff and nonsense, my young friend. I... Well, I will settle the matter. I'll cure you of your daydreams. Tomorrow evening, just before sunset, you and I are going to take a walk, Jamie. We shall go up this alley and we shall hunt for your omnibus, you silly little boy. 
There is the omnibus, just as you said, right at sunset. But look, it's different than the omnibus yesterday, and the driver is not Sir Thomas. Huh? Coming back yesterday, Sir Thomas told me that each omnibus has a plate inside with its driver's name on it. I'll see who this one is, Mr. Bonds. Uh, I say, you up there, driver. Uh, how soon before we start? What? Sir, come in, sir. It is such a fine omnibus. And here is the driver's name. Dan Summer. Oh, qu quickly, boy, move over. Now, let me in. We're moving. Heading straight for that wall. Bless my soul. Let me get the tickets, Mr. Barnes. Driver, two round-trip tickets, please. Thank you, Mr. Dan. Or whatever your name is. No. No, it can't be. It is the impossible do you know who that driver is? I don't know, Mr. Barnes, but I don't like him as well as Sir Thomas Brown. So I shouldn't be surprised if he had more in him. More in him? By accident, you've made the greatest discovery of the century, and all you can say is that there's more in this man. My boy, do you remember those vellum books in my library? This is the man who wrote those books. Dante. Well, it can't be possible. I wonder if we shall see Mrs. Gamp. M M Mrs. Uh... Mrs. Gamp and Mrs. Harris. I like Mrs. Harris. I came upon them quite suddenly. Out there sits the man who penned my vellum books. And you talk to me of Mrs. Gamp. I know Mrs. Gamp so well. I could not help being glad to see her again. Did you spend the entire day in her elevating company? Oh, no. I raced, too. I met a man who took me out to a race course. And we ran a race. I won. Indeed. Uh, do you remember the man's name? Achilles. No, he was later. It was Tom Jones. That's the man I raced. Uh, Tom well, Jones. My lad, you've made a miserable mess of it. Think of a cultured person with your opportunities. A cultured person would have known all these characters and would have known what to say to each. He would not have wasted his time with a Mrs. Gamp or a Tom Jones. The creations of Homer, Shakespeare... And of him who drives us now would alone have contented him, he would not have run races. He would have asked questions, intelligent questions. But, Mr. Barnes, you were a cultured person. I told them so. Oh, that's true, true. And I beg of you not to disgrace me when we arrive there. Now, no gossiping and no running. Keep close to my side and never speak to the immortals unless they speak to you first. Uh, yes, and, and give me the return tickets before you lose them. Yes, yes sir. Mr. Barnes... May I introduce you to my friends when we get there? Hmm? Oh, you distract me, boy. I wish to meditate on beauty. I, I wish to goodness I were with a reverent and sympathetic person. Look! Look, Mr. Barnes. We're here. The mountain. Look at the campfires in the valley. And the rainbow. Campfires? Mountains? Ridiculous rubbish. Now, mind your tongue, Jamie. There is nothing at all. But, sir, can't you see the beautiful rainbow stretching across the sky? No. Huh? Look, the horses have just started to cross it. We'll soon be there. And then you will see that I was telling the truth. Listen. Wagner's das Rheingold. Uh, let me see out that window. Now, move over, Jamie. Oh, no! Oh. Mr. Barnes! Your face is green. What did you see in the water? I want to go back. Tell the driver I want to go back. We'll be stopping soon. I will be pleased to see you. I told you you would come. I wonder who is the sentry tonight. I am coming. I am returning. The boy. The boy is returning. I am bringing Mr. Barnes with me. Who stands sentry? Achilles. And as sentry, I must refuse admission to those unworthy. Here may pass only those who have attained the spirit of truth. There is no welcome for those who merely aspire to embrace it. Yes, I can see you now. And your spear and shield. Mr. Barnes, look. It is Achilles. No, I, I want to go back. Achilles, I'm coming. Welcome back, boy. 
Here, let me lift you up on my shield. No, Achilles. I'm ignorant. I'm without grace. I must wait for Mr. Barnes, of whom I told you yesterday. No. No, I'm not worthy. It's Mr. Barnes who should be on your shield. He collects the books of great writers. No, no, I want to go back. I want to go back. No, my boy, you're the one we honor. You are the one to stand upon my shield. Mr. Bond, sir, why do you delay? Here is only the great Achilles, whom you know. Delay, I see nothing. I see no one. I want to go back. Oh, save me, oh, great Dante. Let me ride in your chariot. I have honored you. I have quoted you. I have bound you in vellum. Now take me back to my world. I am the means and not the end. I am the food and not the life. Stand by yourself as that boy has stood. I cannot save you, for poetry is a spirit. And they who would worship it must worship in spirit and in truth. I, I want to go back. Now take me back. There, through the clouds, I, I see London below. I'll go back on my own then. placed it on my head. Welcome home. Blessed are the pure in heart. Jamie. 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 Where is he? What's happened? I, I don't understand it. Poor Barnes. Murdered. Oh. Horribly mutilated. The inspector told us he looked as if he had been thrown from a very great height. All they found in his pockets were two omnibus tickets. Could, could it be possible that Jamie was telling the truth? She and Jamie were together. I think we should believe. Will we ever see Jamie again? Yes, Mother. You will. You will. You will. You've been listening to the CBS Radio Workshop. Today's presentation, E.M. Forster's Celestial Omnibus, written for the CBS Radio Workshop by Richard Shattuck. D. Engelbach produced and directed... Music by Edward Beto. Today's cast, Peter Laser, Deidre Owen, Mercer McLeod, Bill Woodson, Lee Vines, Carol Titel, Louis Van Ruten, Gregory Morton. This is Ted Pearson speaking. Wherever you go, go with radio and the CBS Radio Network.